What is it that I do? That's an interesting question. My name's Diego Garijo. I've done MMA fights, kickboxing matches. I've done pancreation. I've done the grappling tournaments, bare knuckle boxing. I've podiumed at a few world championships. You know, I went to jail. I almost died, OD'd on drugs and shit. Sometimes I don't even know how to explain myself to people. I just say I'm an artist, but I'm also a part-time drag queen. I saw all these photos of him on Instagram, like all bloodied up. And I was like, this guy's asking me to do makeup. Like, okay, cool. If you came in to have a good time, say so. His makeup was phenomenal, first of all, right? And just his eyes. This is my studio in downtown LA. It's also where I stay part-time. This is uh, the dining table. Here's the kitchen. Here's all my paints. This is where I do most of the painting. Basically, I just put a canvas here and just start throwing shit at it. And What do you usually do when you paint? Uh, listen to music. That's pretty much it. Walk around naked. That's my pee jug right there. Get up in the middle of the night, and as you can see, it's like a train car in here. So sometimes I'm like, fuck. I just like pee in the jug, and then I'll dump it in the toilet. Garrijo, he's gonna do the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and also boxing. I've been a professional fighter for around 15 years. Some of my fights aren't considered professional because they were backyard boogie type shit. All combat sports put together, probably like closer to 14, 15 fights. My brother invited me to his house to watch a documentary. It was called Marker the Smashing Machine. And for some reason I watched it and go, that's what I wanna do. I saw that movie on a Friday. I showed up to a gym on a Monday. And I think within three months, I had just like quit going to school and be like, fuck, I'm gonna be a fighter. Oh my, tremendous swelling in his right cheek and that punch turned. My back's all fucked up from fighting. I'm literally like legally blind in one eye. I am 42. I am definitely at the end of my career. And when I go to the doctor, I don't know, always know if I'm gonna get cleared to fight. Fuck me, that's gonna leave a mark. I did retire for a while. I was clinically depressed. That's when I took a journey. I had two months worth of money, and I said, I'm just gonna fuck around, do a lot of mushrooms, and, and think about what I wanna do with my life. I called it the 30 day mushroom challenge, and I was posting videos of it on Instagram. Uh, I've been eating a gram of mushroom every day for breakfast. Holy shit, guys, I'm fucking tripping balls. And then at the end, I did like a heroic dose. It's like a light went off and instantly I was like, oh shit, I was gonna always be an artist my whole life. I went immediately, like I do everything else, went out, like maxed out my cards, bought like all these fucking paint supplies, started painting. At one point, I had so many paintings, I was like, I'm gonna drown in paintings. And then I just started pumping them out on Instagram. And it just started to pick up. People were like, whoa, it's this fighter that paints. One of my MMA coaches saw that I was making a spiritual journey at that time. And he was like, I would really like you to take this class, like emotional intelligence class. It's like, it's a lot about vulnerability and expressing yourself. And they're like, okay, what can you do that's creative, that's outside of your comfort zone that you've never done before? I had just had a fight. So everybody in the class met me like, face fucked up. I still had stitches, I had my arm in a cast. I don't know why, I just said, what if I did a drag show? And they were just like, yeah, that would be fucking amazing. These are my first pair of heels. When I did the very first Lola show, oh, that one kind of went in a little easy because it's broken on the side. This one was from the last show. It's a little bit like Sailor Moon anime style. I went, I started studying, I took some dance classes and I practiced in heels. I had my ears pierced because I'm like, if I start moving around, like I don't want like a, a clip on to fall off. I had my whole body waxed. I had outfits picked out, songs choreographed. My fighting name is Diego Dos Pistolas Garijo, which means two guns. My wife was like, what if we call you Lola Pistola? And I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant. I love it. The firecracker, you know, Lola Pistola. Because of the drag thing, I'm really seeing the opportunity where my final fight, I'm gonna be able to ask for more money because of all the articles in the media that come with it. I can get more publicity. It's really changed my life too, where it's brought a lot of attention to my art as well. The drag thing is what really has been making my career pop. So it's 
benefiting my fighting, it's benefiting my art career. That's a new wig that I just got for Saturday night. It's gonna be like more of a rock show. I have an art show in San Diego this weekend. I've been super, super busy. This is my first big gallery show and I agreed to perform live. It's a full-time job trying to survive off art. It's really fucking stressful, you know, like you never know when the next paycheck's coming in. I'm here at National City Jiu-Jitsu Club and I'm training for my last fight later this year. Nice. When I got signed with Bellator, I was supposed to be in a tournament and the first round was $10,000 win or lose. It's all over, Garrido wins! And Olivia Garrido loving every minute of it! I know Diego more than half my life and we have three kids. I quit my job and I was like, I'm gonna dedicate myself to fighting. I was so confident that it was just gonna snowball into something bigger, bigger. And then a fight would fall through again. You gotta cut. Ah. Oh, fuck. I was in debt perpetually. I did that for years. He really did it all. He watched the kids while I was gone. He trained twice a day. It was incredibly challenging. I'm trying to negotiate for my final fight. 12K is the most I've ever made at a fight. It just sounds right, you know, to ask for like 50K for this fight with all the coverage and the attention that I'm bringing to the sport. I definitely think I'm worth it. It's more than fair. And tomorrow we'll put drive makeup all over the scar. Man, it is so hard to be in heels when you have 15 years of MMA on your feet. Holy fuck, dude, drag is fucking expensive, man. And I'm such a fucking diva. I refuse to wear the same outfit twice. Like I bought a fucking, uh, a beautiful $500 jacket that I've worn once. I'm like, Lola has to have this. I've probably spent close to $5,000 altogether since it started. I do not make any money from doing drag. I'm barely making money fucking selling paintings, man. When I do drag, like they throw tips at you, it's maybe usually like 80 bucks, which doesn't even cover the shoes. I'm definitely not like making money doing drag. When I do drag, it's like I, I'm being myself. I can express myself in the feminine. I didn't know any of this was gonna take off. I'm not doing it for attention. I did it as a creative performance because I'm an artist and it did take off. It is like helping my career a lot but I do it authentically. And I think I do it like with a good nature. With all the momentum I have, I've been able to, you know, just sell enough paintings to scrape by. I'm a little bit in the red, but I'm still getting by just off paintings alone. I live super frugal so I can not have a day job. Over the last couple years, I've made maybe 20,000. It's hard to get to that point where you can get that clientele that's gonna spend the big bucks. It seems like a lot of your subjects are not paying when you paint faces. Why do you think that is? I think, I think they've been to hell and back and been spit out by life. It was really heartbreaking how close I was to getting into the UFC and, and having really big fights and they would drop out. The story of my MMA career is littered with close opportunities and never got to the level that I wanted it to be. It's like Bob Ross, but with blood. Happy little screams. And now at 42, I'm just like ready to embrace art and just take that 100% to the highest level that I can take it. Hey, hey what's up? How you doing? Good to see you. Hi. Welcome to the Abbey. You're my house. The first time I saw you was at the Offbeat Bar in Highland Park. I loved the way that you are so masculine and feminine at the same time. You get real kind of down and dirty with it in a way that I thought was so fun and so interesting. I grew up with like a lot of Whitney Houston, Madonna, all my mom's music. I've always enjoyed like the feminine flair. I never felt like it was wrong to act feminine or anything like that. No, I, I didn't feel like I was being raised in that real macho way. You have to have kind of a toughness about you to be able to walk down the street and drag. So I find that you kind of capture that like in your drag performance and I love it. Because I'm a big, strong fighter, I've always had more privilege to express myself than other people. Doing drag has definitely 
made me more aware of other people's struggles, like trans individuals and gay, lesbian people, with like society not accepting them for who they are. That's actually become like a huge inspiration to me. Most men see vulnerability as a weakness, and if you're expressing your feminine side, oh, you're less than us, or yeah. you put yourself down. The funny thing is, when I have all those things on, like there is a certain power that also comes with it. Somebody asked me, like, would I ever fight in drag? I go, no. Fighting is dead fucking serious. It's deadly. I take drag just as serious too. I'm a fighter, I'm an artist, I'm a drag queen. And it's all a hustle, man, it's all my hustle. At the end of the day, I'm just a fucking artist hustling to make it happen, but being creative, you know? So I think that's how it all comes together. Ooh, nice and ice cold. I have done drag a few times, but this is by far gonna be the biggest performance. I've stuck wet rags inside of them. We put them in the freezer. The rags expand, thereby stretching uh, the, f the shape of the boot. So it was crazy tight on my toes last time I tried them on. So now we're taking them out. We're gonna let them sit. I think it's early enough that they'll be all dried out by the time it's time to slip them on. I think it's important that the kids see their dad pursuing something that seems so far-reaching, something that he doesn't have any experience in, but not to be afraid to try something so new. When I was a little kid in Mexico, they just told me a man's not a man without a mustache. I think even in fucking heels, I'm still pretty mad. <laughs> So when I first started seeing my dad doing drag and everything, it made me really happy. I really hope he keeps showing up for the community and being someone I can look up to and who others can look up to as well. Hey, oh my God. What are you doing? This is the copy <gasps> of La Keep magazine. Carlos did the makeup. Well, that's me here. You're in it too? Yeah. My booty's there, boo-boo. I'm a diva, I don't do my own makeup. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, that's not cool. Everything is very expensive, for example, every single foundation is like about $40. I use three to four different shades of foundation. One pencil is $20. Everything that, that I use is like good brands. I don't play games with my business, so my kit is like $3,000 to $4,000. This is a show business. This is a theatrical makeup, which is more expensive. When I think about my dad doing drag, I think it's cool because it's like a personality of him. It expresses who he is. There was a time where I thought I was gonna be a career criminal and that I was gonna go to prison. I got arrested for throwing a bottle at somebody's head once and did time. And this is completely besides the subject, but for some reason, Oreo fucking reached out to me and wants to have me like in a fucking commercial and that shit's blowing my mind. It's been really shocking to like be here because I didn't know this was the one thing that was gonna make my career take off. I like to challenge people's perceptions. When they see me, it's like a part of art, you know, like you should make people think. Can you breathe better? Yeah. Do they look good together? I want to challenge toxic masculinity. I want that asshole at the bar that drinks beer and watches fights to realize, hey, look, this dude dresses in drag and he's cool. Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous just because it's like the opening night. I just want to put on a good show. I hope there's a good crowd. Even when it comes to fighting, I try to perceive that anxiety as like just excitement. So I just say, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to do this, and I am. Hey, everybody! How's everybody feeling? Everybody feeling good, looking good? I am an artist, and this is my heart that I'm pouring out to you guys. So I hope you really appreciate it, and I really appreciate everybody being here. Let's start off with a couple of songs.
where I want to take it. I would like to figure out how I can have a, more of a budget, do more elaborate stuff. I also, as a Mexican-American, I would love to like do more Spanish numbers and stuff like that, bring that to my community. You have an MMA fighter, bare knuckle boxer that does drag. Yeah, that's fucking super unique. But the most rewarding part, people reach out and they're like, I'm seeing you do what you do and expressing yourself and it's giving me the courage to be myself. It's better than any like financial success or any of that, knowing that you're doing something that's actually affecting people's lives. My whole life, I just thought I'm gonna be a criminal. So to be here doing drag, it's really amazing. The lessons I've learned from my dad are just to keep going. Even if you're going through a lot, just keep pulling through because it does get better. <laughs>